Cool. Okay. Well, guess what? I'm Alan Moy, <laughs> Dungeon Crawl developer. Uh, you guys know all this already. Um, and what I want to talk about today is pretty much every roguelike that, well, most roguelikes anyway, are single player games. And so it's pretty natural that how do you play a single player game? You download it, you install it, you run it, whatever. Um, and you can do that with Dungeon Crawl, but uh, we also offer online play. Um, and we're not alone in this, but I think that Dungeon Crawl gets a, a lot of unique benefits from its online support that, um, that I think a lot of other roguelikes could benefit from. And so some of this talk is directed at developers of other roguelikes saying like, hey, if you don't have your thing online, maybe you should. Um, and also at what, how, how, of course the whole point of everything is to make the game good for players, right? No one really cares how good things are for developers except maybe in this room. <laughs> um, and so this is how, how, how having online play is good for players. And there's two ways it's good. One is it's just like generally the game being online is good, but even just improving the development process while not in itself a goal results in a game that is better for players. So, uh, I mean, show of hands, who's played Dungeon Crawl? Okay, not everyone in the room, so I'll have to tell you what it is, unlucky. <laughs> um, it's, it's a fairly traditional uh, roguelike, and like, as I learned in the last slide, if, it, if you can play it with a character-based display, it's a roguelike, so <laughs> Dungeon Crawl counts. Uh, but it's only half a roguelike, because you don't have to. Um, it is turn-based, and you die a lot. I think those are some of the, let's see. Yeah, I, I think the, the second through, through fourth slides, are base, uh, bullet points, are basically the three points in, um, in the last slide for his personal, what, what makes a roguelike to me, right? We have, we have no carryover, you, there's permanent consequences, it's turn-based, it's procedurally generated. I didn't say procedurally generated up here, but it's true. Um, <laughs> and uh, so it's got, it's got a character-based display, and also a tiles-based display, so, which, which really helps broaden the appeal. So here's a screenshot of me playing Dungeon Crawl, right? You've got letters all over the screen, sort of this ASCII soup sort of thing. Um, you're in a dungeon, there's monsters, you have swords, all this stuff, very like sort of classic net hacky thing. Um, and if you want to, though, you don't have to play that way, we've got a tiles interface. We have a number of artists who have showed up in just sort of the way the Dungeon Crawl developers appear out of the ether and said, I'd love to draw some art for you. <laughs> Thanks, great. You're on the dev team. Welcome. <laughs> uh, so, and we, we have, we get, I, I play console. A lot of the developers do, although not all. Um, but I think the art style and, and the, really, really broadens the appeal, right? You get a lot more people who, who are not really willing to look at, uh, at this, but, uh, but, but would love to play something like this. And um, so, as I said, it sort of sounds basically like, okay, it's, it's just an hack, but more, right? Or, or maybe less, depending on your point of view. Um, and so why don't we just play it offline? You know, you can just down, you can download it. And, and so we do. Um, you, the, the, you can download, I think, just about any version that's ever been published. Um, they're still there somewhere on the internet. And you can play them off and off offline. Um, a lot of players do that. I don't know how many. It's a lot harder to measure them since they're offline. but probably more than half if I had to guess, uh, just play the offline version exclusively. Um, so why do, we, why do we even bother to offer online play? What's the point? What does it get us? Um, well, one, it's just another offering. You can reach more players that way if you offer both than if you offer just one. That's not super compelling, of course. We could, we could offer all sorts of ridiculous versions like a board game or whatever. You would reach a few more people that way, but it's a lot more work. Um, but uh, some, uh, so uh, you reach more players that way. Uh, another reason that we'll get to is um, by having all of the information for a player's game available online, um, we can, we, you know, the developers, but also just the community in general, can do sort of data analysis of games that have been played. We don't have to, you know, install an agent on your computer that uploads every, every character that you type so that we can see what happened which would be spooky and sinister, right? Um, and so we can, we can, 
use that to learn more about what games are being played, to help people who are playing games and having trouble or want advice or whatever. Um, and uh, it also is, a, is a, a place for players to socialize, right? Um, when you're playing online, you, there's a little like, I mean, you don't have to, but there's a chat area. You can, you can talk to the person playing the game or to people spectating can chat amongst themselves and so on. Um, and I don't really get that, but a lot of people seem to like it. Um, there's sort of a whole community around the web tiles chat. It's like its own planet, right? And any place that people aggregate develops this weird subculture, and I'm not part of web tiles culture, but it sure exists. Um, and, uh, and there are other, other ways that we use the online uh, infrastructure to organize uh, events. You know, every time we release a new version, which for quite a while has been one version, uh, two versions a year, I should say, we're sort of in a lull right now. I think we're going to miss our, our six-month deadline for point twenty-one, but that's life. It's free. You know, take what you can get. <laughs> um, and uh, it also just helps us get feedback from players better um, in a lot of different ways, um, which which helps improve the game um, and also improve players' perception of the game. Even even if we didn't really listen to the players at all, like they would feel better for telling us things, right? Um, you know, we do listen as it happens. Uh, but but just getting feedback from players is is a virtue in itself uh, uh, of a sort. So so here here we're on like the flexibility for players. Having it online means you can play from pretty much any device that like has an internet connection. You don't have to download anything. Um, I usually play dungeon crawl over SSH myself. You know, if you're a developer, that's familiar to you as one of the tools available on pretty much any, any machine that you want to write code on, probably you have access to SSH or Telnet. I, actually, I don't think we let you play over Telnet. But um, you can also play over web tiles, which is the uh, browser, in-browser, in JavaScript and Ajax and JSON or whatever, who knows. Um, <laughs> We send the tiles out over the web and they appear on your browser as if you were playing the local version. And I think we have limited mouse support, but, but some mouse support anyway. Um, and even if you don't have SSH, every device has a browser, right? You, can, you could probably play Dungeon Crawl on the right kind of toaster if you could get a browser installed on it. Um, and so just this, this makes it really easy. You can, you can play on like, you know, people have installed ports on your phone that like display it locally, but talk to the, the web tile server or whatever. Like that seems, I don't want to play on my phone, but apparently people do. And just having it offered online lets people get to it however they want. Um, and you don't have to do the work of updating. We do that for you. We update the servers. You can choose to play on an old version and you get the, the bug fixes backported to that version, but not the new features. Well, you, really bad bug fixes you get backported, but uh, but um, it's more or less the old version. Um, doesn't go back until the end of time, but of course you can download that. Um, and you don't have to play from the same place, right? You can play from your, your laptop at home, uh, and then you know, if your boss isn't watching, you can play at work, uh, and it's the same game, right? Um, so that's, that's one of the nice things about online play. All, all of, it's, it's easy to play, to, to get access to be able to play. Um, and having, having the data from, from these games online means that we, we have, there's a lot of ways that we record this data and make it available to anybody who wants it. Uh, both humans and programs can access this, this stuff. Um, whenever you die, uh, or win, rarely, uh, we save what's called a morgue file, which is like a log of like, hey, here's roughly what your character looked like, here's a list of all the important events that happened to you, Here's some stuff that you did, what your character was good at, what he was wearing, uh, and, and it's all saved in a text file online for you know basically the end of time. Uh, maybe, I don't think we've deleted any, but maybe. Um, and there's so much detail in these that it really helps when players ask for help. You can create a morgue file on whenever you want during a game that's ongoing. You say, make me a morgue file, and it saves an in-progress one. Um, and so there's this culture of when you ask for help, you should provide a morgue file. Like you're saying, oh geez, I keep dying in, uh, in the lair. You know, I, I think it's because I'm wielding the wrong weapon. Like what can I do? Here's my morgue. 
And sometimes the experts will say, well, yeah, that weapon is terrible. Like, you should do X, Y, Z instead. Um, but a lot more often, you'll look at the morgue file and say, well, you're doing 15 basic things that are not very good in general, and so, like, all of your characters are going to suck until you fix those. Um, and you couldn't do that if we didn't have these morgue files. Sometimes players say, I need help with X, and they don't really provide a morgue file. And it's like, yeah, well, I don't know. X sounds fine to me. Sorry you keep dying. Um, but if, if people upload the morgue, you can, you can do some really in-depth analysis on these things, just a snapshot of the character, and say, here's some stuff that doesn't look so great to me. There's a lot of different play styles, of course, and what looks bad to one player will look fine to another. But there are some common patterns in, in, that you can get from morgue files. And if that's not enough, uh, we keep frame, you know, frame in, in so much as a, a, a console game has frames, we keep frame by frame replays of every game ever played online. And you can download these, you can view them online. Um, and so just within the past couple of weeks on the Dungeon Crawl subreddit, I've seen at least two threads where like something interesting was discovered as a result of someone looking through a TTY rec. Um, one was me, uh, a player said, geez, I, I had 230 health, and then next turn I had two health. What happened? That, that seems crazy. I was like, that, that's a lot. Yeah, I agree. Uh, so I looked at it, and it you know, was able to say, oh, okay, well, you know, this, first this happened, which multiplied all damage by, 50, by 150%, and then this happened, which multiplied all damage by two and a half, and then like, okay, then you got hit for about 60, which is a lot, but you know, it turned into 230 or, or whatever. Um, and then someone found a bug, I think, just yesterday, uh, by looking at somebody's TTY rec, they complained that the devs had disabled magic mapping from working in uh, the realm of Zot. And it's like, well, no, we didn't. What? What's wrong? You, you must be misremembering. But since there was a TTY rec, another player went and watched it and said, no, he, it really did happen, and what he did before this was X, Y, and Z. I was like, oh, that's interesting. Let's go look at the functions. And yeah, well, sure enough, if you choose to forget what you've seen of the map so far and then read a scroll of magic mapping, there's something incorrectly set that says they never want to know anything about the map. Okay, so I fixed it. And having a TTY rec made that possible where before I would have said, nope, can't reproduce, close, right? Um, so, and, and a lot of this is made available through uh, what we call Sequel, is an IRC bot uh, that hangs out in, in our IRC channel. Uh, both, both the public, well, both channels are public, of course. But the, the crawl IRC channel focused on players chatting amongst themselves, and the crawl dev channel focused on developers uh, talking to themselves or you know, players asking for uh, reporting bugs or, or what have you. Um, and so not only are these morgue files, i.e. snapshots of your character at death, and frame by frame replays, TTY rex stored, those are both sort of good at, for looking at by humans, right? But not so good for computers. Um, and so every game played online also uh, reports what are called milestones. The game has a lot of things that it notes as important. You, uh, you enter a new dungeon area, you, you um, defeat a, a unique monster, you uh, start worshiping a new god. There's lots of stuff that happens. A given game will probably have dozens of milestones in it if you get to the end, or one if you die really early. Um, and all of these milestones have a bunch of uh, properties attached to them. What, kind, what, what race were you when this happened? What god were you following? What level were you? What, what was your highest trained skill? Um, what monster was it that dealt the killing blow to you? And what weapon were they using? This is all put into our milestones and uploaded to, um, I don't remember where we store milestones, but Sequel downloads them somehow um, and puts them into a Postgres database, which is like, basically a repository of everything interesting that has ever happened in any game of Dungeon Crawl played online. Um, and of course, nobody wants to write SQL queries against this database. You could if you had permission, but we don't. I don't anyway, probably Greensnark does. Um, but there's also, Sequel, the IRC bot, has a query language against this database tailored towards Dungeon Crawl. You can say, uh, I think I have some examples on a coming slide, but you can ask very targeted questions about any subset of games played online, yours or anyone else's, uh, it, and it's relatively simple to learn. It's some work, but it's you know, easier than figuring out the structure of the SQL database. And uh, so you can use this a lot of ways. You can look at your own games and say, where do I usually die? What, what am I good at? Um, or you can like, 
ask, hey, what, what do other players do? And so I've got a few examples here that I, that I put together for this talk of me using SQL in a relatively simple way. One thing you can do is just say, like, what, what am I up to? How much have I played? Well, in the past, what is this, two, three and a half years, I've played for a lot of time, <laughs> right? And, and this doesn't count idle, right? If you, if, you, if you don't touch any keys for five or 10 seconds, we stop counting. This is how much I've actually played. Um, <laughs> And uh, it's, it seems like a lot, especially considering I haven't really played much in the last six months. Um, but okay, that's like a summary. How much do I win? You know, 15% I'm pretty proud of. It's, it's a hard game. Most players win nothing, never. Um, <laughs> but you know, a few percent is pretty reasonable for an average player. Um, I think, you know, players who really try hard and are a lot better than me ha can do substantially better than this. Um, but it doesn't matter. I'm not here to brag. Um, <laughs> What, but I can ask questions about like, well, okay, Dungeon Crawl has a, a pantheon of what, 26 gods, I think? We, we keep taking them out and putting them back, but around there. About as many letters as there are in the alphabet, um, <laughs> because each one has a different first uh, letter for their name, so you can access them through the character uh, thingy. Um, and I can say, well, which ones are you know, the strongest from my perspective? Each, give me a listing of all the games that I've won or every game that I've played, sorted by God, and display the win rate. And it's like, okay, well, BO, I played one game and I won it. Very strong, right, but a small uh, sample size. Um, and like, Trog really is probably stronger than BO, but I messed one up. Um, and, and so you can, you can see this kind of stuff. What are you good at? What should you practice? Um, you don't have to do it by God. You could do it by race, whatever. It's got a million different things in here. Um, or something that I, I remember doing is like, okay, so the Elven Halls are sort of an optional side area in Dungeon Crawl that you can go to if you like, think your character is relatively strong, but you're just in need of some better equipment or whatever. There are dangerous elves in the Elven Halls, but some great loot. And like, it's optional, and I can never really remember exactly how strong the monsters there are. And so I can say, list for all players recently on a trunk version, when they entered Elf, uh, sorted by their experience level, and tell me what percent of them died. Right? I was like, okay, well, I probably don't go in at level 10, but uh, things start to drop off down there at around 19. All right, that, that's probably an okay estimate for when it might be safe to go in. Um, yeah, I see some shaken heads in the audience, so sure. You have to be a good player, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you know, and you can still die there. And this is not perfect because maybe you go into elf at level 19 and leave and then come back at level 30. Well, there is no level 30, level 27. You know, so this is not perfect, it's just for the milestone that they entered Elf, did they eventually die in Elf, not that they die right away. You can, you can construct more careful queries, but that sort of thing happens. Um, and a thing that's happened a few times is like, huh, something really strange has happened. We run a tournament every time we release a new version. What was the win, with the win rate for the 0 0.15 tournament? Well, about 1.5%. How about the 0 0.16 tournament? Almost twice as high. Someone noticed this a week into the two-week tournament, What's that all about? And so we went digging, and once we, once we found the answer, someone made this commit to GitHub. Stop doubling all damage dealt by the player. <laughs> that, that, put, that put the win rate back where it was supposed to be, right? Um, and we might not have noticed this for a long, long time. There, there are bugs that have been in there since 0 0.8 that we found last year, right? Uh, if you knew the secret tech, you could take a, a spell that was supposed to be melee range targeted, and just aim it anywhere on the screen if you just pressed a, a button we didn't expect. And, you know, since there's no milestones about that, nobody noticed it until someone told us. But this one, we do have milestones for, and we found it, and we fixed it. Um, and, and sort of similarly, we can get metrics on what's happening with things that have recently changed. Uh, when the monster Iron Giants were added, players were complaining, geez, these guys are really oppressive and horrible, and they, they kill me all the time. And so we said, okay, well, Let's look in all of the Dungeon Crawl's four various hells, Dis, Gehenna, Kukaitis, and uh, the other one, Tartarus. Um, how often are players dying in each of these comparatively? And okay, well, they die the most in Dis. Yes, that is where the Iron Giants have been put. What's killing things in Dis? Well, Hell Sentinels and Iron Giants. Okay, so now these are, I did this query like last week, and so it doesn't measure uh, what, what stats we might have seen at the time. It was much worse back then. 
Um, and so it's like, yes, there are a lot of Iron Giants killing people, and we can watch some replays and see if it was a fun way to die or not, right? It's okay if players die as long as they have fun and feel like they deserved it. <laughs> and so being able to look at this stuff lets us make adjustments uh, based on how games are actually progressing and not just how we think they ought to progress. Um, it's also, uh, now, now we're done looking at SQL and statistics, uh, sort of. We, we have, there's a bunch of just ways you can socialize around being online, right? We run um, scorekeepers that, uh, you know, that list for a player all of, you know, in a, in a more accessible version than SQL, i.e. you don't have to know how to write LG queries, you can just look at a web page. But it shows like a table of all the characters and races you've played, it shows the streaks, how many wins in a row you've ever gotten at your best, what percentage of the time you win, what's your high score, are there any comp characters slash, or any race slash background uh, characters that you have the global high score for. You know, it shows you all this kind of stuff that you can brag to your friends and say, check out this game, look how good I am at it. Um, and you can, anyone who's playing online, you can spectate. Um, whether they're playing console or tiles, you can spectate them in console or tiles, which really helps. You know, a lot of players play tiles and they're like, something's wrong, and they're like, I don't know how to read tiles, this looks like gobbledygook, but I can check, I can log in in console and see, oh yeah, okay, I see what you're talking about now. Unless what they're complaining about is a graphics bug, of course. Um, and as I mentioned, uh, web tiles chat, like, uh, it gets recorded into morgue files, and so you can go read what people were saying to each other, but um, there's, there's like a whole community around that. And um, you can also uh, track custom milestones with SQL. Uh, you can, it's not just a query language, it's a scripting language. You can define new SQL commands. We have some like great player, which is have you won at least one game with every race in the game? And SQL will let you know, well, you've won these 14, here's the ones you have left, or you have, congratulations. Um, and uh, we also have tournaments that we run with every release, and we track the, we, we set certain like goals. Hey, if you can do X, Y, and Z, you get some tournament points. And some players play this very competitively, like, um, personally, I think the tournaments are a lot of fun. I don't like the scoring system because I feel like it rewards playing a lot more than it record, rewards playing well. You have to do both, but if you play well and not very much, you won't win, which, oh well. You know, no prizes, but you get, you get, a, you get a banner, so there's that. Um, and uh, so we have, as I was saying, we, we update the game for you automatically, and so who needs tests when you have players? Um, trunk, uh, this is a joke, of course. Our trunk is actually quite stable. It's very, it's, it's very rare that there's a bug that ruins the game that even makes it to trunk. Um, it does happen, uh, and you know, usually this is just in the form of, oh, the game crashed. Um, you know, you have to, it goes back to the last time the game was saved for you, which is like every time you go to a new uh, floor of the dungeon. Um, but, you know, it doesn't happen so often, but it does happen. And we update trunk automatically, so you don't, so as soon as the bug is fixed, it'll never happen to you again. And uh, importantly, whenever, a crash happens online, it gets pasted to the dev IRC channel with a link to their morgue and a stack trace and you know all of the stuff that we thought might ever be useful in debugging a crash. And we can go download their save file and try to reproduce it. Um, which all of this is much harder to do if you convince players to do it your, themselves, right? Um, and just given that we are in IRC listening to this kind of stuff, it means that players who are on IRC to talk amongst themselves, it's easy for them to reach out to developers um, and ask for help or to point out something that doesn't seem to be working quite right. We're also you know, active on Reddit, which is not really the same thing as being an online game, but it's an online presence um, that this reaches out to. And we can use these, these forensic tools uh, that we were looking at for debugging, TTY Rex, right? Like I was saying, that player watched a replay of a game and saw, yes, that really weird thing did happen and here's what he did first. Usually players don't go to that much effort, but you know, we can when we need to. Um, yes, all of those things I have said, great. Which I guess means that I must be done uh, with my prepared, uh, prepared stuff. Do I have any questions? Someone, someone get those people a mic. Right, is that a thing that's happening? I don't know. People had mics last time. All right, I'll, I'll bring you mine for the moment. Okay, thanks, Noah. Hi, 
two comments. Um, first off, um, I am a web tiles player. Okay. My, to my terrible shame. Um, <laughs> And honestly, one of the things for WebTiles chat for me is I find T2Y Rex hard to do, but people can watch and give me commentary live on how to be a better player than I currently am. And I think that's maybe a useful thing to remember um, when thinking about WebTiles culture. Secondly, I always thought it was sequel, not sequel. Sure. Uh, <laughs> it's, you know, no one ever taught me how to say it. Um, yes. I noticed that there are two L's, and the word sequel has only one L. But um, actually, I think that there's another reason, uh, which is that the first IRC bot for Dungeon Crawl was named Henzel after Lindley Henzel, mm -hmm. uh, the original developer of Dungeon Crawl. And so sort of all of the bots that we've written since then end with E-L-L. -L. Yes. Uh, and so probably pronounced like Henzel is my guess. Whereas I guessed, well, it's like sequel for yes. crawl, and thus that, sequel. <laughs> that's the pun, of course, right? You use SQL to execute SQL queries. <laughs> Thanks. Can I just jump right in? So I'm a, I'm a huge database nerd. I'm just curious, um, how do you store those TTY recs, and how big is the database in total? So the TTY recs are actually just stored in flat files. There's, they're not stored in the database uh, that SQL uses. Uh, each server has its own directory that stores TTY recs, and there's there's some well-known format for TTY recs. If you just search for the word TTY rec, you'll find out what it is. I don't know what it is. Uh, but I know that those are the main uh, consumer of disk space on the servers. Uh, people are constantly having to upgrade their server or delete old uh, binaries or whatever to make room for more TTY recs that players keep dumping on there as they play. Hey, uh, Blue Sky, Infinite Time, and Tech. What's something you feel like is unrealized potential of this system that you would love to see happen? Um, unrealized potential of like having an online, so, well, something we've wanted to do for years and years and years is just unified sign-on, right? Right now, there's a bunch of official public crawl servers, like, I don't know, six or seven or something like that, and they each have their own sign-on system, and the, the usernames are not necessarily the same. Like, I've, I've registered A. Malloy on the popular ones, but, like, someone could register A. Malloy on the Korean server if they wanted. Uh, please don't. But, uh, and it's, it's actually fine. You can tell Sequel, actually, the only games that I want to consider as being by me are the ones on these servers. Or, please count games by me uh, as being games by A. Malloy or Hyper A. Malloy, one of the challenge accounts I created. Um, so it, it would be really nice if someone who knows how to do unified sign-on could like do that because we keep meaning to and like we never get around to it and it's hard. Uh, you mentioned with every release that you uh, have tournaments. Uh, mm -hmm. Could you elaborate on that? Is that literally just so live the players that, or is that automation? So the way based? that the, the tournament works is uh, you can have, we have I think it's about two weeks, well, two weeks including the three weekends bracketing those two weeks. Uh, during that time, every game that you play on the newly released version on any online server counts towards the tournament, and the scoring bots in the meantime are tracking all the stuff that you do, putting it onto a tournament page, and there's stuff updating as the tournament goes on, like, you know, winning, winning a game gets you tournament points, great, um, but as the tournament progresses, the races, gods, and backgrounds that are won the most frequently, like, say, Minotaur Berserker of Trog, the most popular, easiest to win thing, start giving you fewer and fewer tournament points, and you're rewarded for winning things that are won less often. Um, and this is all done automatically. The players can just log in, look at their tournament score page, and it says, here's how you're doing, this is the streak you're on, here are the scores you could get by playing XYZ. Um, and also, you know, similarly, there's what we call Nemelex choice. There's uh, Nemelex is God, crawls God of randomness, basically. Um, and uh, he, at, at, sorry, gods are genderless. Uh, Nemelex um, chooses a rarely played uh, race and background and says, you get a ton of extra points if you can be one of the first eight players to win this challenge race. And as soon as somebody wins it, Nemelex goes and picks another challenge race, and, or challenge background, and says, okay, that last one's still good for the next eight players, but now here's a new challenge. So there's always you know, something fun you can aim for, whether that's winning a Nemelex choice, achieving one of the extra challenge goals, like 
I don't know, win a game without using any potions, I think, is a thing that we have, any potions or scrolls. And this is all tracked automatically. Players don't have to worry about it. There's an official score, and you don't self-report anything. Hi. So um, search engines put a lot of effort into quantifying like whether someone left because they were frustrated or they, they found what they wanted. And dating sites put a lot of effort into quantifying whether someone left because they were frustrated or they found what they wanted. How would you quantify a fun death? So uh, I would encourage you to watch last year's roguelike celebration talk by Pleasing Fungus, another dungeon crawl developer, uh, which was about, I think he called it combating the hypothetically optimal player. Um, Dungeon Crawl is not unique, but uncommon in having a codified design philosophy of like, we don't just add stuff because it seems like fun. We have a list of like, here's the kinds of things we think are fun, things we think are unfun. And like, we have a saying, when in doubt, do the opposite of NetHack. Um, <laughs> which is not because NetHack is a bad game, it's a lot of fun, but it's very different from Crawl. And we, we don't like the kinds of things they like. Um, and so, Pleasing Fungus's talk was about don't include mechanics that are powerful but frustrating. You don't want people to go in there and say, oh, darn it, if only I had... There used to be a mechanic called... Vic well, it, we called it victory dancing, but it wasn't put in on purpose. was like, um, after you defeat a monster, you get some experience in your pool, and later that experience is put into skills that you're using. Seems great, a good way to get players to be good at the stuff they're doing. But the optimal way to do this was to kill a monster, and then if you want to get good at swinging your sword, you just go like this for a while, right? And that's like, that sucks and it's boring. And you don't want players to die saying, ugh, if only I had subscribed to the super boring victory dancing, or if only I had cast fireball at a wall 80 times first, maybe I would have been strong enough to survive. Um, and so we have guidelines like that of, you know, what... Um, what players should be encouraged to do and what they're not. And that's not quite the same thing as what's a fun death, which we don't have, you know, you watch it and if you laugh, it was probably fun. <laughs> <laughs> or if you feel bad about it and there's something you could have done that was tactically good as opposed to just like grinding, you know, there's something to learn from. If there's nothing to learn from, like the, the game just kills you for no good reason, it's not a lot of fun. But if there's something you could have done to prevent it that's interesting, then it's sort of a fun, useful death. Hi. Um, I play locally in character, but I watch sometimes in SSH in order to learn from other people who are more experienced. And I was a little curious about the cross-spectation thing between web tiles and SSH. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't seen, I think, statistics in SSH of the number of web tiles watchers. And I don't know if there's a way for me as an SSH watcher to interact with the web tiles watchers right, or to so. just see the actual gameplay. So that's, that's a, uh, a missing feature, is that you can spectate, uh, you can cross spectate, but you can't really cross chat. Um, there's a separate chat mechanism for tiles and for console, which is kind of a shame. The player can chat in a way that both tiles and console can see, but um, you have to be spectating in the same way in order to communicate to each other or to the, or, or to the player. Um, so that's a thing we don't have. We'd like it. Um, I don't know what's involved in making it work. Probably similar to Unified Sign-On, if I had to guess. Um, I have a question. Okay. Which is, I thought that graph of like player death in the, yeah, in the Elf branch was uh -huh. really interesting. There's a ton of things in Crawl that like I still haven't seen because it's just such a vast game. How many players do you think take this sort of data-driven approach to choosing things, and is it something you support and want more players to use? Um, I mean, I would say the number of players who do this has got to be quite small. Um, I'm a little bit biased because the people who hang around in IRC are the ones who do it, and they're the ones that I see. Um, I hang out on Reddit as well, uh, and there are some players, but you know, not a lot. Um, I think some of the best players do because they want more, they want more ways to improve, and they find this, and they're like, aha, here's a useful thing. I'm, I don't think it's something, I think players should enjoy the game however they want. This is one way to enjoy it, and so I don't want to say that I encourage it. I welcome people to do this, and um, we have some documentation for doing it, but I think a lot of it is sort of ad hoc, like you watch someone, and then eventually you figure out what they're doing. It would be nice if we had better documentation on how to use this stuff, but it is sort of complicated. We have a lot of documentation, it's just sort of hard to, to pick up. Uh. Yeah, 
I can't decide if it would be super cool to see this like on the wiki, like, you know, the lair, people die at this level in the lair. Um, yeah, you, there's a similar graph, like someone writ, wrote a canned query that's like, there are four sub-branches of lair, right? Spider, snake, swamp, and shoals? Yes. Uh, and you don't get all of them every game, you get two, and so someone wrote a query that's like, which of these four do players die in most often? And like, it's always shoals, of course. <laughs> um, so we try not to make shoals harder, right, as a result of this. Um, and you, you can write stuff like that. Um, a lot of different ways you can use this, whether it's you know, studying or, or trying to find patterns or what have you. Cool. Well, thank you so much. Big round of applause. Thank you.